On July 19, 1977, Frank J. Ozog was seven years old. He lived in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, where his family owned and operated the Francis G. Ozog Funeral Home. The third floor of the building is where he, his parents, and three sisters resided and called their home. He had an ordinary childhood until one fateful night. A massive thunderstorm had taken hold of Johnstown, unleashing its heavy rain for days. Frank recalls one moment when the night sky erupted in light with the crack of numerous lightning bolts, making it look as if it was daylight. His sisters were terrified, but no one knew it was to come. But the older generations of Johnstown knew to be worried. They were no stranger to floods. Two fatal floods had previously devastated their community in 1889 and 1936. Frank and his family eventually fell asleep, only to be woken up by a loud noise coming from the funeral home below them. As they descended the steps, they were met with the sight of a woman clinging to the fence around the funeral home, the rising water forcefully rushing around her. His parents helped navigate her through the water, and they provided her with dry clothes and a place to stay for the night. She informed them that her husband worked in the mills nearby, and she was trying to meet him before being swept away in the roaring storm. Although the electricity had been flickering off and on for a while now, it finally went out leaving them in total darkness. Frank and his father went down to the first floor viewing room of the funeral home, where they were supposed to conduct two funerals that very day. Water was spilling in rapidly, so they knew they had to work fast. Frank held the flashlight for his father as they closed the open caskets, hoping that they would not float away. By the time they finished, the water had risen to the staircase fifth step, almost separating the father and son. Luckily, Frank was able to help his dad to safety by reaching out to grab his hand and pulling him through the forceful water. They joined the rest of the family where they huddled together in the pitch black of the night, listening to the loud sounds of the water rushing around them and overflowing into their house. Although the first floor was flooded already, the windows and doors were the only thing acting as a restraint from the water on the second floor. But soon, The windows shattered against the water's powerful force, and it started to pour in fast. Frank's family fled to the funeral home's roof, where they noticed daylight was just breaking. Sitting at the very top of their house, they could see everything happening around them. Water was everywhere, and just about everything was floating in the murky river from basketballs to furniture and even cars. They sat there for hours, terrified of what would happen to their house, but soon the water began to go down. Rescue helicopters flew over, telling them to remain calm and stay put until the water was at a safe level. However, this took hours, and all they had to do was wait and watch the floodwaters recede. Frank remembers seeing mud everywhere. Houses were covered in mud, and so were the cars. He couldn't even see the road. Debris was all around them, making it very dangerous for anyone who wanted to move around. Eventually, military trucks drove in, clearing the streets and helping the sick and injured. Frank's parents urged him and his sisters to go to their grandparents' house in another town unaffected by the flood, but Frank refused as he just wanted to be in his own home. He recalls playing with his toy Tonka trucks in the piles of mud around his house as others worked hard to clean the debris around him. Frank's father informed the military of the two caskets they had in their funeral home and how the bodies were supposed to be buried the day before. They went down to the first floor to grab the caskets and they were met with the shocking sight of one laying on the ground as expected, but another standing straight up vertically. The family conducted two small funerals at Grandview Cemetery and buried the bodies in new caskets so they could pass on. After everything was cleaned and fixed, it seemed like Johnstown would go back to normal, and the children of the town were sent back to school only a month and a half later. But the aftermath of the flood stayed with Frank's family for a very long time. The first floor of the funeral home was ruined and would need to be completely redone, so they would have to hold funerals now on the second floor where they usually met with families. His sisters would experience terrible fear of rain and storms for the rest of their lives due to the massive thunderstorm before the flood. 
and Frank believes that he experienced many health problems later that correlated with being in debris after the flood. The flood of 1977 is only a memory to Frank now, one he can pass on to his children and grandchildren someday. There are many more survival stories to tell like Frank's, but for some, their stories ended in the rushing water and debris. These ones whose stories ended that fateful night are remembered through other people's stories of perseverance, as well as a mass unmarked grave to remember them. As the town continues on, narratives like Frank's are necessary to remember as it reminds us that we can persevere through anything, even nature.